Hey, what's poppin' guys? Sizzle here, and today I'm gonna show you how to host your own Minecraft Java server for you and your friends to play on without needing to port forward. Uh, so first off, you have to make sure that you have Java SE 17 at the moment. Uh, if this is ever updated and I remember to, I'll have a pinned comment that tells you what you actually need, but this should be good for the next few years at least, if not forever. So yeah, just download that, it's in the description if you don't already have it. Then from there, you wanna go to uh, minecraft.net, enus, download server, or whatever language you're in. But that'll also be linked in the description. You want to download the .jar file, and then give that second to download. Alright, and once you have it, uh, you can drag it wherever you want it. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to drive it onto my desktop right here. I'd also recommend making a folder for your server, uh, just so you can keep everything all nice and organized in one place. So once you have that, you go into that folder, and you'll see, right now we just have server.jar, you want to right click, hit new, and text document, and you want to call it start.txt, and open it again in notepad, and all you want to do is copy and paste this exact stuff from the Minecraft website. Uh, a lot of it's customizable, it's like how much RAM we'll start with and use uh, by default. Uh, the important parts are though, uh, no GUI, there's no real reason to need a visual indicator of stuff on your server, but if you really want that, you can delete it like it says here. But the actual only thing we have to do here is delete this part and rename it to whatever the .jar file is currently called, which in this case is just server.jar, and we save it. Then we want to do file, save as. From there, we want to do start.bat instead of txt. And if you can't see this, you have to change it to all files to be able to see uh, the end of your like, name. And once we have that, we now have start.bat. We can now delete start.txt, and then you just run start.bat, and it'll do a bunch of stuff, uh, and then it will close once it's done. You need to go to eula.txt, change ela to true, uh, ag you know, agreeing to the eula, which you should, of course, read on your own, um, and make sure you agree to. I've already done that uh, off camera, though. Anyway, uh, next up we have the server properties. This is the properties you're able to change. You open that up, you can see a lot of different settings. Uh, the important ones that I think most people would care about are spawn protection. This is the amount of blocks that are protected in spawn. I always set that to zero for me and my friends, because why would you want any blocks protected? Um, then there's some other stuff on here. Uh, you can look into it more yourself, but the only other one I would maybe turn on would be uh, whitelist, which is down here, which you can turn on to true. Uh, and for the sake of demonstration, I will turn that on because that's an important one for a lot of people. Anyway, uh, once you have that already, you can run start.bat again. And this time it will take a bit longer and actually do a bit more stuff. Uh, and this, this process here can take a lot longer depending on how good your computer is and whatnot. So don't be uh, scared if it's taking a bit longer than normal. Uh, anyway, when it's done, it'll say done. And then you can... Uh, and then your server is actually already running at this point. So if you go into uh, Minecraft itself and you boot up the game. Once your game's booted up, you can just hit multiplayer, add server, and you can just type in localhost. And that... It's not localhost. Alright, right, well you can see, uh, I had to, I'm not sure if you have to do this, but I reran the start file, and now it lets me try to join the server, it says you're not whitelisted, so what you have to do, it's just like if you were an admin, you have to do whitelist, Add, and then your username and choice, in my case it's Sizzle. And you can see, added Sizzle to the whitelist, and now, if I try again, you can see I'm able to join my uh, Minecraft server. And I guess this is the seed we were given. You can also mess with the default seed and stuff, if need be. Um, but yeah, you can see I'm able to, you know, break, break blocks, play the game however I wanted. And it is open. Now, the difference is, and the important distinction here, is I've only made this server available to anyone on my Wi-Fi network, which, if you didn't know, is not particularly useful. 
Okay, so next up, uh, what you want to do is go get your tunneling software of choice. Uh, a lot of people have used something called NGROK, but I personally uh, used and definitely enjoy using Play.gg. It's not sponsor or anything, you use whatever you want to use, but this one is just the easiest one for me personally. What you want to do is hit download, and then you want to get the Windows version. When that's done, I'd recommend moving it somewhere in your server folder so you remember where it is. Uh, but you can put it wherever you want, it doesn't have to be here. I'm just going to put it in there, and you drag your plate.exe file into that folder, and then you should run it once, um, do something like this, and it will open a uh, claims page like this, and what you need to do from there is make yourself an account, and I already have an account so I'm going to log in, but you can just sign up, it's very simple, and then from there, I uh, will say wants to make a new IP address. I'm not going to actually show mine in this video, but know that you'll have like your IP here. You want to hit add agent. And you can see I already have my uh, other MC server right there. But all you want to do to add a new server, and you'll notice it does stuff in the background here. Now you have a bunch of stuff there. But the important part for having other people access your server is clicking add tunnel and tunnel type, and they actually have a bunch of different games here, but what you want to do, obviously, is Minecraft Java. Hit next. You'll have, like, a default stuff here. It's almost always correct. If it's not, I actually have no clue how to help you, but maybe someone in the comments can help. Anyway, from there, you just hit next, and then create tunnel. And then, there you go. You'll have your new Minecraft IP address with the address right there. Uh, and if I go and try that address... Assuming, like this, it's hard to kind of prove on my own computer here, but do know this does work. If anyone puts in this address, then you hit done, and you join it, it'll be the exact same server, except anyone across the world can join it. Uh, the important thing to remember is that for uh, your parents to actually be able to join your server, you need it to be running. Right, that start.bat file has to be running, and the playit uh, exe file both have to be running every single time. But yeah, uh, that's how you get started with the server. That's for how to add mods and change all the random settings and whatnot. You'll have to look into that yourself. There's a lot of guides on doing stuff like that. Uh, that should be really easy to follow now that you have a server up and running that anyone can join. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.